Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, thank you very much to the team at Longest Chance. Um, this is actually a very exciting time uh, for RFID, and also for me because it's my first visit to Moscow. Uh, you have a beautiful city, and uh, it's very impressive. Uh, so impressive, I've changed my flights to go home a bit later. So, <laughs> very good. So, I would like to talk to you today about RFID in aviation and why it's an important time for RFID and why um, really we're at the cusp of a very interesting future. So RFID has been around since the 1940s. The RFID in baggage was first proposed back in 1991 and airline CEOs who had been watching Star Trek said they wanted a tricorder to find the missing bags. In 1998 and 1999, the first large-scale industry trial was undertaken. Back then, an RFID tag cost nearly $2, and we were very pleased with read rates of 90%. In 2005, IATA started doing an industry business case for RFID. And that business case showed that in the application that was considered, which was really just sortation, there was only a limited capability for RFID to help. It did, however, establish that we could use the technology. In 2008, IATA took its focus off RFID and started looking at general improvement. Interest has continued in RFID until now we have the longest chance hand-to-hand -hand system and at the same time one of the world's major airlines is rolling RFID out across its network. In all of those years the problems haven't changed. You come to close the aircraft doors and you're missing three or four bags. You don't know if those bags have been tagged for the gate you don't know if the bags never made it to the airport from their inbound flight. And you don't know if that bag will arrive at the build in 30 seconds or 30 minutes. In fact, in the 80-odd airports that I've visited, quite often you don't know how many bags you will have for the flight. Quite often when you travel around the world, you hear that baggage is a factory, a sausage factory. Baggage isn't sausages, They're, every bag is different and every passenger is different. So it's really useful to try and understand which bags are not going through the factory. And now we have a modern dilemma for the passenger. That is that the airline wants to tell the passenger if their bag is on board. And you can really create problems by upsetting a passenger before you push back. But this information is becoming expected. RFID is one of the ways that we can solve a lot of these problems. Actually, RFID today brings the same benefits as we've always considered. If you're an airline, every bag that is mishandled on average costs $100, even if the bag is delivered just one hour after the passenger. So it doesn't you don't have to save very many bags before you've covered the costs of RFID infrastructure. It's also going to give the airline greater operational transparency so that the airline is better able to manage its baggage operation. And the very new resolution 753 is actually demanding that airlines are tracking their bags at certain key points. And one of those points is the arrivals area. So from 2018, airlines have to be able to demonstrate this when they are claiming for mishandling bags. Now, almost every airport that I go to says, hey, what's the, for the, what, what is in this for us? But all airports want to build a relationship with the passenger. And baggage tracking is a very good way to do that. Simply have the passenger scan their baggage claim receipt into an airport app 
and now you have a channel to talk to them. The other area, of course, for airports is reputational. I'm working with one airport at the moment who is upset that their rate of mishandling is three per thousand. And airports are beginning to realize that their hub performance really makes a difference. And then, of course, there's the passenger. What do they want? There's nothing worse than walking through a snowstorm wearing jeans and a t-shirt because your bag didn't arrive. And of course, passengers are becoming more and more aware of how everybody performs on their journey. There are some places that people simply don't want to transfer through. Passengers also want to have more information. They want to know when their bag is arriving on the reclaim. They want to know when it was put on the aircraft. Some airports want to offer premium services where business class bags or first class bags go to a different reclaim. And that simply doesn't work if you don't tell the passenger the right reclaim for the bag. And of course, we also have the ability for a simplified bag drop if we move to a permanent tag because the passengers don't like queuing up for anything anymore. There have been a lot of changes over the last few years, though. One is that ultra-high frequency, sorry for the typo, um, is now the standard for aviation R RFID. It's used in baggage, cargo, and mail. The other one is that we've moved the focus away from sorting the bags into tracking the bags. The reason for this is if you think of the baggage system being a factory, you really only want to know when something's not in the right place. Everything else should just continue to work. Resolution 753 has, in, has introduced a lot of tracking interest at the moment, and RFID is probably the best value solution for tracking. There's also currently a big debate between reusable and disposable tags. If, if you look at reusable, you have the Qantas Q tag and the standard for the electronic baggage tag. which demands an RFID inlay. On the other side, Delta, who are currently implementing, have deliberately chosen to use disposable tags because this reduces the culture shock for all of their operation. In fact, over the last few weeks, we've discussed this at length, and we believe that there's a good five to seven year transition. The other big change is that customer service is the new driver. And that's being brought forwards by people like Delta wanting to give full information on the bag. Also over the last few years, baggage mishandling reduced. And of course, so did the operational budget and the staffing levels. And the limit for that probably crashed two years ago. So now you need a really smart operation. So why is RFID particularly relevant? The first one, obviously, is our resolution 753. So what we are trying to do is to have every airline track every bag at three key points, basically so that we know what's on the aircraft and what's on the airport, in order to produce exception-based handling of the bag. The next step for 753 will be that any airline that cannot demonstrate tracking will have to bear the full cost of any mishandling rather than sharing those costs with other, with other airlines. 753 goes one step further also in that it enforces sharing of the information so that the inbound airport should have full information on what's being sent to them. I've worked in too many baggage halls where there's not been an idea of what was on the inbound aircraft. The other big driver for RFID is the customer expectation. Some airlines who use barcode tracking to send this information to the passenger are only having about a 25% success rate. So it's really important that we have a better way to track the bags because to a passenger, not telling them where the bag is, is interpreted as, you lost it. Of course, 
Passengers always want more, so we may as well have something that works and can give them that. So coming to the trial with longest chance, having an end-to-end -end tracking, hand-to-hand -hand for longest chance, is an essential aim of 753. There are at least two examples during the trial of where proactive baggage operations would have saved the bag and could save the claim. There's also a rise in baggage fraud where passengers make fake claims, which is a very easy crime to commit and costs the airlines millions a year. Having the closure of the journey by tracking the bag to the reclaim is an essential step to reduce that. So this is the first serious RFID trial for baggage since 2005-2007, and it's been truly exciting to see how things have developed. The readers are more efficient, the software is better, and we're now getting actionable data rather than just volumes of data. I was also very impressed to see the unique international cooperation on this trial. One of the things that really stands out is the 99.99 plus read rate. When we first wrote the IATA RFID baggage standard, the airlines put in 99.95% as their request. And the technical experts in the room said they could never do it. So this is really quite an impressive figure. It's also the first trial to focus on uh, delivering the, uh, the baggage being accepted and re-delivered to the passenger, which, let's face it, is the only thing that the passenger is really interested in. I also just wanted to mention about security and RFID. One of the remaining security threats is that insiders are able to bypass some security steps. With the RFID tracking, we can have every bag and its security level recorded at load. With an increased focus on access to aircraft, it's possible to significantly reduce security threats. So to close, I just want to thank Longest Chance and all of the partners for the trial and to congratulate them on the great successes that they have achieved together.